This is a TD-1, a small device by Ajax 3D, and its purpose is to get the TD, or transmission distance, of a filament. A transmission distance is the amount of light that a filament can let pass through it, and this device can tell you what that is. Why is that important? Because it lets you do things like this. This is a 3D print using a few colors, but thanks to knowing the transmission distance of a filament, we know how much light can pass through each of those filament colors, allowing you to mix and match filaments to create rainbows and gradients, all from a very few select amount of filaments. Recently, Steve from HueForge and AJ from Ajax 3D was in town. So we talked about HueForge and the TD1 and how the new one, the TD1S from Big Tree Tech is out and how we can get new updates to this that give it perfectly accurate color. It's really exciting. Have a look. Hey, it's Joel. Welcome to 3D Printing Nerd Studios. Of course, probably powered by PCV Wave. Sign off. Link in the description. You know what to do. Hey, this isn't a Hue Forge. What's up, everybody? This is AJ. What's going on, man? How's it going? AJ, as you know, the proprietor, the inventor, the, the person that came up with the TD1. Yep. And you last saw him on the channel, 3D Printopia, Earth 2023. And it was really cool because we said the word TD1 over and over again. We got to tell people what it was about, how it relates to Hue Forge, color theory. We went over a lot of stuff. Yeah. And in the time since then, you, there's there's been a lot of upgrades, updates, and some new stuff with it. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to take people through what it takes to get a TD1 up and going now. So how, how has it been? like? Like this is, I know this is an older one, but yep. there's been some things that have happened. Well, I mean, the most recent one now is the TD1S. TD1S, okay. So that's a partnership with BQ or Big Tree Tech, mm -hmm. um, where they're helping design the PCBs and the parts, and it's all injection molded. Uh, but essentially, it's the same same components, just in a smaller form factor, no longer mm -hmm. off the shelf. Mass manufactured. Yeah. Instead of AJ manufactured. Yeah, instead of in my living room. All grown up. So the net, the next one would be firmware 2.0. Um, so this brings a whole gambit of calibrations to color. So trying to make color a little bit better. Obviously, the first time we talked, it was um, it, it hadn't even launched yet, right? Mm -hmm. So right. this, so we've actually I I launched it, building them all myself. So that was that was one thing. Mm -hmm. So it was it was busy. It was nice. I was able to do some sponsorships, like I did a Cookie CAD sponsorship with one where it was all Cookie CAD uh, provided. That's cool. Wait, since then, you've been able to hook up directly to HueForge, correct? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, uh, HueForge integration came since then as well. Um, it's also been refined several times. It's been uh, an ongoing process working with, with Steve to, to update both them together. So every time I made a change or he made a change, we kind of worked together to keep that coherent. Yeah, yeah, well, I, well <laughs> what I was wondering, for being able to update, I mean, older hardware, that's not a problem. Like, it's just, it's just the method in flashing. Correct to bring it up to date, the right? The ease of flashing, yeah. So like if it is if it is 1.0, um, we'll, we'll have to take the case open yeah. to hold a button down to, to connect it. But if it's newer than that, it should connect and just work. Oh, cool. Okay, so, we'll, so what we're gonna do though, we're gonna try to get new firmware on this. Yep. This is the one that I have here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go through the calibration process, which I was told is kind of involved, but uh, the result is a lot more accurate color recognition. Most common complaint I got was that uh, like blacks would come in green. Mm -hmm. uh, this new way that we allow ourselves to, to offset and get rid of all that green shit. I like more, more accurate yeah. colors, so let's yeah. do it. What's the first step? All right, so first we're just gonna connect it to my, my Mac here that's running QForge. Just like go yeah. for it, right? Yeah. All right. So this is the first time it's connected, so it is popping up to ask if I wanna yeah. allow it to connect, so I'm gonna say allow. Yeah, insert filament. So that first connection there, though, it did it did not allow HueForge to connect to it because I hadn't approved it yet. So I do need to just re. Oh, okay. It. Oh, I get it. So when it does fully connect, you see we'll have that HF oh. symbol in the corner, there and we then go. we also get this pop up that says, "Hey, you're on 1.02." We're within HueForge here, and, and we're yeah. doing the update to the TD1 through HueForge. Correct. So this is this is the uh, HueForge version 0.9.1 and it has the 2.0 firmware files directly in it. And on here it has HF for HueForge, yeah, so right? Yeah, it's indicating that it's connected to yeah, HueForge. Check that now. out. So okay. from here, all we have to do is hit okay. It will say uh, that it's updating. Oh, here we go. In the bottom left corner oh, of HueForge. Update complete, reboot TD1. There we go. So, okay, that was quick. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. TD1 V2.0.0. So it was all successful. Now this isn't prompting me here for any sort of calibration, but no. we, we 
Will it still work? Yeah, yeah. So it'll still work. Um, your color just may like we'll, we'll we'll test one real quick and we'll see what what value we actually get. Okay. So 2.0. We've put it on here. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I had 102 before. Yep. 2.0 brings some new features. What are they? So there's quite a quite a lot of them actually. So if we go up here to the TD1 menu and then go to settings, you'll see there's now this big old list of things that it can do. So we can flip the display over 180. So some people oh. that are left-handed, they like to feed what? in from the left, right? Uh, continuous TD. Yeah, so, so that's actually been in for quite a while. Okay. Um, continuous is, it doesn't really do much inside of HueForge for you, but I do have a Python script that you can run and then connect this to your computer running that script. Say you wanted like, to know like, how consistent this spool of filament is, you could pop it in on a printer while it's printing let it pull through it and measure that throughout the print. Oh, okay. And have okay. a nice little chart of... Oh, so it's, you're essentially tailing a log file sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, yep. and so you can do the same thing with color, continuous color. Yep. Uh, a common request was, I don't know how to read hex codes easily, but I do know RGB values. It makes a lot of sense. So I've added the ability to um, just, sh just show those values on the screen as RGB yeah. two, 0 to 255 values. Another, another big feature that I'm a huge fan of is the optical button. So optical button basically makes it to where you no longer need that physical switch inside. So instead of using that button to determine when to, when to start a scan, um, we're just constantly querying the two sensors for changes. And if the changes are high enough, then we go ahead and, on both sensors, then we go ahead and fire off a scan. Oh, I see. As of firmware 2.0, um, a lot of things became optional actually. So a color sensor is optional now. Um, the screen is optional. I might try to rip out all the color stuff and make one custom so I can sell it for cheaper for like five bucks. Oh, there you and go. So, and so you really are getting your cost down real low yeah. if all you care about is, is TD. The last sec uh, setting that I haven't really talked about but we have on right now is screen mirroring. So once you've turned on screen mirroring, pretty much anything that it says on this screen, minus that little HF logo, sure. um, will be shown on this TD simulator. So that allows you from from start to finish to run headless. Yeah, completely headless. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's one of the ways you can get it real down down low to to a very very minimal approach to, to testing TD if that's all you care about. And let's get it calibrated. Yeah. On on first post after updating to 2.0, it does flash on the RGB segments one at a time, red, green, blue, and it captures those as kind of a a, a reference point. The big thing that it doesn't have right now though is uh, a range from like black to white. And so it's currently gonna assume that you have the full range. And so uh, your, the colors may be dramatically different until right, we at well, least do that out. first calibration. How about yellow? If you're being a dink, you get a yellow car. Pop her in. Okay. I will note that uh, from, from this side here. Okay, so the TD is the same. I'm given a hex code of CD9352. Yep, so if you look in HueForge now that we just did that scan, it automatically popped up this menu here. Um, and gave us what it what it assumes or what it already knows. So TD and color is what it just read. So you can see our color code here is actually looks a little bit orange. It does look a little bit orange compared so, to the yellow. Yeah. To this vibrant yellow we have, right? So so that's what I mean by it's it's going to still read. It's just going to be quite quite off in some in some regards. Okay. So if we scan some more, you'd probably see some of the same the same outcome. Oh, I see. So next, what we'll do is the um, in HueForge, it's in the TD1 menu. It's called calibrate RGB colors. Okay. So what this is going to do is take a black and a white, and like I said, get that range. Here, HueForge is just saying, hey, before by the way, before you start, you're going to need a white a black and a black filament and a white filament. Boom. So, so now we're just gonna hit, hit okay and it's gonna start and you'll see it immediately oh, jumps black. over. Okay. Oh, remove filament. Okay. Yep. So now we've given it we've given it proper white, proper black. Yeah. And now it has bounds. It yeah. knows it knows the extent. It knows the, the mins and maxes. Okay. Yep. So we could try that same yellow again and see kind of like where we're at. Sure. Let's try it. Oh, completely so see, different. Yeah, so now it's a very different color. So um, now it is yellow, but it's too bright. It is too bright, that's right. So what we want to do here is start applying calibrations back to the TD1 from Hue Force. So what we can oh, do- Oh, okay, okay. Yep, so what we can do is we can double click on that swatch that just scanned, and then we can kind of adjust it to be more oh. true to what that color is. And we don't have to hit it perfect. Okay. Um, and we don't want to hit it perfect. So, like, oh. analogy that Steve likes to use is that this is like, 
like stretching dough, right? A pizza dough. And when you grab it here and you pull this way, you're kind of shifting the other side too. Yeah. And so we're trying to make sure that we're doing it in small increments. So we're not, okay. we're not over stretching and, and messing up all the other color channels at the same I time. I like making a proper pizza dough. Pizza, pizza. We've adjusted the yellow yeah, so, a little bit and, and we're just it's, going off it's of closer. Yeah, it's just visual closer. closer. Yep. Okay. So then we're just gonna hit, hit okay. And you'll see down here now it says original color and adjusted color. And then we have this option here to apply oh, the TD1. Up. So we can just hit apply correction and it's gonna say RGB cal saved and then. Okay, put the filament in, right? Yeah, go ahead and pop it back in. Okay. See, it's gonna go straight to scanning. So yeah, so, it just didn't update the text. XBFB73. Yep, and so okay. you see there, it, it adjusted it. So now we, we know it's that the, the yellow- It's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is the gray <laughs> filament. Yep, so go ahead and see, and we can leave this menu open or we can close it, it doesn't really matter. So see- Oh, and it's actually that's cool, you can leave it pretty up. Pretty okay. close, so we double click it again. It's it's it looks a little, little bit blue. We can just kind of bring blue down a little bit. This is cool. Yeah, yeah. Like so, I, okay, this satisfies the creative itch of my brain. I'm an artist. Okay, so- So we can leave this in for now. In. Okay. Yep. It actually does look to me to be a little bluish. Like, yeah, so I think I'm gonna leave it at about 90. Okay. I think that's a good place to leave it. Sure. So we're gonna hit okay, and then same same concept oh, here, we're gonna apply. 425258. Yeah. And so if we open that up, we can see it's much closer to oh, what, 90, much closer. 82, 66. Yeah. So it's pretty much dead on where we just adjusted. Uh, now we can move to like a blue or a red. So red. Yeah, let's do red. Okay. And this is a Creality. This is the Creality uh, PLA, that's right. Okay, so the color we just got is quite red. It's quite it's red. maybe a little bit too red. It seems a little- A little dark maybe? A little dark, yeah. yeah. So this is kind of the one that, you know, we were talking about backstage before here that sometimes um, this is gonna be the bounds of this sensor anyways. So we may not want to apply this one. Really? Uh, yeah, just because um, what we're doing here mainly is, is a crosstalk. Uh, and we're looking for, you know, when, when red's in, if green is getting activated a little bit or um, that kind of stuff, right? And so these bounds like this, like this is super close, right? And so, we don't want to try pulling this because it may affect the others too much at this point. So oh. there's gonna be a point where you find that there's a compromise where okay. if I pull red a little bit too more, too much more, then everything kind of comes with it. Or if I push it, you know, blues or greens yeah. more, then it pulls red back the other way. And so that's where we're gonna be finding our bounds. Okay, well, it's already, it's close. I know it's yeah. not exact, but it seems visually fairly close. Yeah, yeah. Close enough. Green then, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a uh, HTPLA. Hey! <laughs> That sounds new. That sounds super new. Here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in? Yeah, go ahead. It's very low TD. It is very low TD. And see, we got a little bit of a bluish green. Um, so if I open oh, that, that up. That is slightly blue. So then would you just reduce the blues a little bit? Yeah, so I think that's what I would do in this case. So just bring it down a little bit, maybe maybe two, three more, and okay. then okay. And, and then... we can apply apply the correction. That's right. And it'll say that it's applied. We still have blue. Perfect, let's do blue. Okay. This is a, oh, a Jesse Premium Pet G Bold Blue from printed solid. And we don't have to worry about PLA, PETG, all of yep. that stuff because you said the TD values can value or can vary. Yep. But we're talking about the pure color. Yep. At so this yeah, matter. at this point the calibrations that we're messing with is all purely around color. So okay. we're not messing with TD at all. So we've got 1A4099. Yep. So we have a, a nice blue here. It might be a it's little a nice bit blue. it's uh, a little bit dark maybe. So, so this it's is so where, close. Yeah, it's very, very close. So here's where you can kind of do a couple of little things. Like you can, um, like, like I said, it looks like there might be too much green in this view here, but that could also just mean there's not enough blue. Oh, I see. So, that makes sense. Think of it like- Did you adjust? Like, I did, I went up like three. Okay, maybe four. It, it made a little bit of a difference. Yeah, yeah. I, I can tell. I, I think it's pretty close though. Yeah, let's do it, all right. So we'll hit okay. Yeah, and apply that. And apply, perfect. There we go. And now I think it's a great time to circle back to that um, yellow and then we'll circle back to gray oh, just to make sure okay. none of this has affected the gray crazy. This isn't too bad of a process. No, I mean, it's, it's a little bit manual. It's, it's Well, it's manual, but yeah. it's really, what's really cool is the calibration is relying on how you perceive the yeah. color, yeah. which is a very personal thing. I've got F7F, B57, yeah, so we go. and that, that looks, looks very, not, that, that is a vibrant, great. that's accurate. Yeah, looks great. Cool. Let's go ahead and stick the gray back in gray just back to in. see that's if any of I those thought. other calibrations have affected it. And we can even do a black and a white to make sure those are still the bounds, right? All right. There we go, and that's looking pretty pretty close. That 87, looks, 81, 64. Yeah, yeah, that looks fine to me. Yeah. Like, visually, yeah. that's black. Yep, and so we got 17, 24, 28, pretty, pretty much black, a little bit of a blue shift. So we could we could correct for that if we really want to. I don't think it's enough to worry about. Let's move back to the white. And whoa, look at that. Yep, F, 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 F. 
All Fs. So that is that is the bounds. Of, I mean, that is literally the bounds of white. Yeah. I mean, technically, we could have gone over a little bit there, and it'll just cap it back down for us. Oh, but okay. but yeah, <laughs> it is it is in fact white. So that's good. That's what we want. So this is proper. We're really doing it though, are we, buddy? So we can we can now just kind of throw some random colors at it. You want, oh, you want random colors? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ben. Come on, come around here. I want to see what happens here. I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna take that one. That's interesting. I will I will pick a high five. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I've got I've got five to throw at it. That looks great. So this is a special spool I made at Proto Pasta. Any any predictions? I think it should do pretty good. I mean, obviously it's not gonna sense the sparkles in it. No. Um, but I think it should do. I think pretty darn good at seeing that it's a like a tealish color. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. One D five seven seven six. Looks pretty good to me. Maybe maybe not quite green enough. It's close enough to me to where I wouldn't adjust it. Sure. You know, me and my old eyes. Again, color's a personal thing. Absolutely. I'm so old. All right. Next up is my favorite high five blue. I love it. It's a great color. I just need it in ABS, please. <laughs> One six four C nine five. That that is that blue. Yeah. That blue is great. hyper accurate to yep, me. Yep. Looks great. Okay. High five blue. Now here is a semi-translucent PETG. My guess is either it's going to be very close to white because of how transparent it is. Really? Yeah. Okay. E5, C4, 3. Okay. Well, it wasn't quite washed out. Okay. Not washed out. So yeah. it's not a washed out yellow. That is, it's yeah, detecting so. it as a very vibrant yellow. I would say kind of like a ripe banana yellow, right? You're going to have a bad day. This is almost a, a color that you can't really produce in all the colors right. that are on a screen. It's a really cool color. Yeah, it's super cool in person, but it's hard to, to show that digitally. So this one, it's it's kind of like the previous one, but it's mostly transparent. So this is, the, it's from Hello 3D, it's Firefly Green. I oh. believe this is, is a glow in the glow dark. The dark. Interesting. So another feature in 2.0 is we can actually measure how glowy that is. What? Well, let's see what happens here. EB49A. Oh, yeah, a little bit of a it's, it's reddish a color. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, the big reason I think that happens is we're looking right through that clear and seeing the actual surface of the NeoPixel oh, on the other I side. See, yeah. So there's yeah, a yeah. little bit of color to it. On this screen in HueForge, now that it's done doing that, we're just going to leave that. Yeah. And there's a little button here that says glow test. Glow test. Yep. And so this test takes about 12 seconds okay. because we're we're turning on that NeoPixel to full brightness. Oh, you're charging the We're filament. blasting it with as much light. We're hitting it with white light and blue light because oh. blue typically tends to be slightly to the UV spectrum. Yeah. So that can help give it a little bit more charge. So one thing is it is like perfectly transparent. So we probably need to try to block some of the light, um, but it says zero. So oh, uh, are we are we positive that it still works? No idea. <laughs> My bad. This is um, just a purple PLA. Perfect. It's 5-1, five, 5-1. One, five, one. There we go. And it came up with, uh, let's see, is that a, yeah. Nice little purple. That's nice. It works. Well, this was a big deep dive into the TD1, the new firmware, and how to kind of use some of the advanced features and how to calibrate stuff. And dude, this was yeah, freaking great. Like, it, it's really impressive how useful this device is over time. Because yeah. I'm not having to buy a new one. You updated the firmware, you've made the functionality better. The integrations with Hueforge have been better. Like it's it's continually evolving into a more and more good tool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's always been my intention is to is to make it as valid for as long as possible. Yeah. So like like the TD1S does not replace this. No. Um, if you have one, like it does, but if you have one already, you don't need to update. You can if you want to. There, it's yeah, sure. it's smaller. It, it's more compact for for things like integrating on things. If you're if we're going to go down that road, as far as keeping this supported, I, I want to keep it as long as possible. I'm going to yeah. continue to offer the self sourcing option for anybody who that's cool. It's not easy to get to my kits or whatever, so they can always they can always do it that way. And that's always my intention is to as keep it as viable for as long as possible. Well, with that in mind, then people are going to want to know more about. TD1 where they can go. So look at the camera right there and tell them where they can go to find out more about TD1 and what you're doing. For more about TD1, you can go to ajax-3d.com. Ajax-3D. Yep, yep. Okay. If you've made it this far, it's awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in and accurately find the colors of all your filaments all the time. No, it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> I don't know. Print all the things in various colors. And as always, high five. There you go. Nailed it. <laughs>